record to this. I have start. I have started the recording. So uh, this I will I will just demonstrate this slide to you people so that you you get the idea that uh, how you have to study. Okay. Uh, please please uh, mute your mic. Otherwise, I have to mute. Everybody, please mute your mic. Mute all. Okay. Okay, this is, we have, we have devised our course in three section. The first section is others category. Why I have put this in the first place? Because this is the section which is the most important because five to six scenarios will come from this section. This is a bit diverse style section. However, uh, why it is important? Because you can see that the weightage it carries in your course is 25% because we have lesser course, however, we get almost one third scenario from this category. I'm going to explain this why, and we have we are starting from this category. Category one is our. It will be covered most of. It will be covered in first week. The second category is the counseling, which is like uh, five to six scenarios are coming uh, from this category, and this this makes almost thirty percent of the course. However, the history taking is the largest category. This is almost four. 45% course which we have, it, it is from the history taking session. So, however, five to six scenarios also comes from here. So we have to give equal importance to three categories so that to, to maximize our chances to pass this exam. Uh, okay, okay, I am going to zoom. Uh, okay, uh, regarding uh, just, just a slide, other, other, other category, why it is other category? Prescription writing, number one, Semen, which we are going to talk about, talking mannequin today, and we are going to finish it today. Prescription, um, Dr. Adil will take class of two lectures consecutively, and this will be done in two lectures. Similarly, the teaching scenario, Dr. Junaid will take this class tomorrow. The teaching and procedure will be done tomorrow. So com combined stations are history taking and the examination stations, this will be covered in our course as well. So these are actually the, the one, two, three, and four. These four sections will be covered in one week. Okay. So this will be our timeline because this is smaller section. However, this carries five to six stations because I, I, I already have given the other uh, orientation, marks distribution and all that. That's why I, uh, I shared with you guys last night. Uh, okay. Let's come to the counseling. These are the counseling scenarios, approaches like 14 to 15 are the counseling counseling approaches. Most of these will be covered by Dr. Adil. He will take class. Uh, you will get interaction with Dr. Adil uh, the day after tomorrow. He will take two classes, and you. Uh, uh, but this is the prescription class. However, these are the approaches we will be covering in the counseling section. And this is the history taking section, medicine, peers, ENT, surgery, and medicine, uh, and this, this uh, uh, we have the sections and we will be covering all these section counseling and history taking by and by, because I will be covering most of the medicine. I will be covering like uh, uh, other, uh, the psychiatry station. And along with that, um, Dr. Shiraz and Dr. Hira will be covering uh, 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 along with these, the remaining sections. So this is what orientation I am giving you. So strategy will be, uh, this will be our strategy. Our first uh, stage is actually your familiarization with the course. This will take our, it's not 20 days, it will take 30 days. Our course is one month and we will be finishing uh, five, uh, six days a week will be the class. And we will be uh, finishing this almost in 30 days. Then it will, uh, start, uh, stage two will be your stage. You will have to do a lot of practice. And third stage, uh, I should tell you that this is quite important. Most of the people don't know about this stage. This is de learning stage. Actually, why I call this de learning stage? Because in these two uh, stages, we, we kept on learning new things and we kept on practicing them. Uh, however, to some extent, we become robotic. So this third stage is quite important. It is the patient centered approach. You have learned all the things, and in this approach, it can take 20 days or 20 days, 15 days, whatever time you find. However, this stage is equally important to get 
to become patient centered we will be talking about later on okay so this is all uh, what i uh, i needed to tell you then we other the things are we are going to talk by and by so just regarding this presentation i wanted to tell you how we will proceed uh, okay let's let's uh, talk uh, now directly to our abcd approach uh, which we already i had sent you these notes so can can uh, can you see uh, this this contents i'm going to talk about okay first of all let me explain it to you in a very clear way what is a b c d approach so this uh, now we are going to start our formal lecture and we have to in in one hour and 15 minutes we have to complete this approach so for you let me make it easier for you why it is easier it is easier because what we are going to do we are going to learn one approach and we are going to apply this approach everywhere on every station there are subtle like small changes we are going to do and after that like uh, uh, if i i am going uh, uh, i should talk about the uh, the classification i have classified them accordingly unstable patient and stable patients there there will be two kind of patients okay the unstable patients okay a b c d e this is a b c d e approach so breathing the uh, the station which we, in which the breathing will be the main issue uh, these are these three e then th that will be the mix approach breathing and circulation uh, these are these two scenarios okay uh, and then will be the bleeding uh, like it is the bleeding in which the circulation will be the main problem so uh, these are that scenarios and last one is disability before going into the detail uh, what we need to we need to learn uh, about just a minute okay uh, so uh, before going into the detail we need to learn uh, you you people can see my screen completely yes sir okay uh, you can write here if if my screen is uh, visible to you people so that i can proceed okay okay that's great so this is all classification i have already given these are like uh, i have called them less important scenarios because they are not coming you can read them we are not going to uh, cover these scenarios however i have classified them in the notes so that whenever you find time you 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 can read them however our course uh, the scenario which are coming uh, these are until uh, acute limb ischemia up till acute limb ischemia okay this is the introduction the first pass introduction these are the things i want you guys to get familiarized with first of all like any other station there are 16 stations it will be a station like this this is the semen in front of you it is the semen this is the crash trolley or emergency trolley okay you you you, you should know about these things in front of you and then uh, this is the monitor on the monitor you you should know where uh, uh, which thing is where for example if this is the heart rate this is blood pressure this is oxygen saturation this is temperature so you should know about the monitor the same monitor will be there similarly th this is quite important uh, cannula size according to size orange gray green orange is the largest one and the yellow is the smallest one this is for kids so um, in to our scope is orange gray green pink so uh, whenever we will be needing to rush a lot of fluid we will be using the orange if the orange is not available gray then green the pink is which is commonly used everywhere for example you have to take uh, just give the medication like asthma case you don't need to like give the any any fluid so you will be using the pink cannula so uh, familiarization with the cannulas is quite important because they are going to used every in every uh, every station okay then uh, these two things are quite, uh, equally important let me tell you because i'm 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 just like letting you know what it is 
this the thing uh, i'm on the cursor it is the non rebreathable mask so with this you give the oxygen so it, it is very likely do you use it in this demonstration so this uh, i i want you to familiarize with you can see there is like a bag attached with uh, nebulizer this is similar like the nebulizer mask but there is a bag like attached to it it is non rebreathable mask so you you should know about that because in the real station you are going to the trolley and you are going to pick and you are going to put it on the patient we are going to talk about that in a while just i am i want you to get and this is the uh, uh, uh this uh, mask is uh, nebulizer mask okay and one thing again very important the people uh, don't know even they are going to take the test and this is the muse chart and new chart and new chart uh, we can call uh, national early warning scoring system sometime and uh, they give you in any any station they can give you new chart what is new chart actually uh, this you can see here respiration oxygen respiratory rate oxygen saturation uh, you can see uh, circulation pulse uh, this is blood pressure pulse uh, conscious level and temperature so there is a scoring system along with that you can see the gravity more is the gravity more is the score so uh, this is its interpretation if you this just tell you for example in their system whenever they says okay my patient has five muse on muse score on muse score it is five so you you get alert in one with one number that the, the patient is not well the score is seven you get alert the score is two okay you can calm down then you to go in further detail you are going to see in the monitor you are going to see in the muse chart uh, in detail to get the idea what is going on so in uk system when you work over there this is very common that you should know about this news charts thing this is in the emergency because let me tell you what we are covering in this station is directly emergency the patient comes in emergency and how you are going to approach so i just wanted you people to get familiarize all of all of these things before we start our abcd approach directly okay okay th these are the objectives why why we do abcd e approach so first of all the far most important thing is the far most important thing is because because of this thing the patient can die if you do some blunder for example if the patient with heart failure you give give him like normal saline the patient will die and you will fail the exam so these kind of blunder first uh, these objectives should be in our mind what we need to do is we will not let the patient die first thing second identify and prioritize the red flag signs what what you are seeing in the patient red flags in their signs or symptom whatever you have to deal with them optimum use of time this is quite important in emergency you cannot wait for whole day because the emergency has come i can uh, okay you have this time you have to optimize you have to take the history you have to do the examination like you have to do everything along with the management so this is our goal okay these three things are quite important the three things i have talked about are quite important then monitor the patient the patient is with you you have done the emergency now you are going to monitor it and then you are going to do a thorough clinical assessment the secondary survey thorough clinical assessment what would what was the cause and you are going to do the diagnosis and then take the expert opinion this is quite important as well because they want you to be a safe doctor you have done whatever was in your scope and you want to involve the seniors that it, it carry marks because they want you to be the safe doctor okay the long term management and safety netting this is the last thing that sh thing should be in your mind okay that we will be doing the long term management they they, they, want, they want to check because in the station they tell okay talk to the, uh, the uh, talk to the examiner what they want to check that does you know the long term management so the, you have presented the patient and they they ask you one or two questions okay how you're going to manage it long term for example you are going to put him statins if the mi patient you are going to lifestyle modification and all that and you have done the safety netting as well how much safe you are so up till here we can see 
these three points are your points you have to do something like it it is your time you have to uh, give your knowledge and performance and even monitoring and from here to here it is how much safe you are so you have to keep this in mind this is our objective when we are encountering a patient in an emergency these should be objectives in our mind okay then there are some important points you need to know the about a b c d approach okay uh, you can read them i i I'm just greet the examiner observe the i'm going to start from here greet the examiner and uh, see setting and crash trolley you need to give the impression to the examiner in the start that you are watching everything that you are alert you have you have already greeted the examiner you have you you have like seen the setting you are familiar with the setting that you are not going like robotic and uh, go and start the patient my name is dr hamid i am one of the doctor here today uh, uh, i i'll know i'm going to see uh, uh, my patient is talking here no 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 you have to give the like uh setting look because i am alert you enter calmly and you just greet the examiner tell your ex uh, number gmc number and you just you it is you you have already read the scenario or uh, outside you just have a look on the trolley any other thing like the patient uh, for example there was a asthma patient shortness of breath and there was an inhaler present over there you haven't seen that and you are going to miss a lot of things that that are already there so so you have to go with quite open eyes or and these thing um, from the number 4 i am going to tell you you have to assume by yourself i am doing a team work you have to assume is a team work why it is important because you need to run a commentary for example whatever you are doing in the abc station you are going to run a commentary for example what is this okay uh, i need to give my patient oxygen 15 liter per uh, minute via non breathable mask you you need to run a commentary for whom because you are leading a team they need to know about that so that's why it should be in your head that you are leading a team over there okay then again you need to involve the patient whatever whatever management you are going to do with the patient you need to involve the patient as well okay so these two things are quite you should know that and you should see the monitor you should see the monitor okay M multiple management this is the heading i have put that in your mind that in the emergency situation there is a multiple management there is not a single management because you are going to deal with airway breathing circulation disability anything anything can happen if the patient can have bad circulation the patient can have bad breathing so you will on the circulation on the breathing part you will give oxygen you will give the salbutamol and on the breathing part you will you need to give rush of fluid so so this this approach you should you should know that this is the multiple management system for example in the end you have to give a thorough management as well for example long term management you need to run a couple of test you need to run a couple of long term test couple of specialized tests for example yeah echocardiography so this should be in your mind we have to give here multiple managements okay last thing um, important point at any point so this is quite important i am reiterating at any point if a b c d e you are going through your approach if at any point you find any difficulty in the previous approach you will switch back for example you are on the circulation you are assessing the circulation the patient start breathing bad or saturation drop you will leave everything and you will come back to your breathing this is quite important this is the key of passing this station okay because they want to judge you for example on the asthma station this is very common patient is breath um, like uh, having shortness of breath you give oxygen they get better then he start breathing again bad or saturation drop you give salbutamol however when you reach to the circulation you are passing the cannula and you are assessing again patient starts you 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 stop your circulation over there and go to the breathing again and start doing management again okay 
so i i hope this is clear to everybody because this, uh, because this point is quite important you okay common mistakes the common mistakes people make this is very common mistakes we as a student when we go to the exam uh, i have highlighted them faulty understanding of setting and patient condition this is quite important because sometimes we are told that um, the station it is the same station going to come there they only change one single setting and you do not go there with open eyes and you get in, into that trouble so faulty understanding for example what is that if the patient has already undergone a procedure appendectomy so this should be in your mind you are not asking that questions again and again because it is understood that he, you have read that notes you will proceed okay second faulty initial observation and starting if you have not completely read everything like you have not complete understanding of the setting and what they have given you start the station because of the rush this uh, look look at the rush this third thing is rush because we are told that emergency situation it is the rush situation you have to be in the rush this is not you have to be in your nerves if you do this practice again and again you will see that this is quite easy approach this is not difficult approach so you have to do the things quickly but you should not be in the rush for example what we if you, we are in the rush we forget to see about the wristband inhaler patient notes drug chart and uh, and we we all, we are only in the air we are going a b c d e approach and we have not done that similarly we forget to sometimes take history examination and investigation because of that rush again often student do not do commentary because of that rush they do not do commentary they do not involve the patient and the, your ips score comes very low because of that because i am I, ips carries four score out of 12 similarly patient you do not go to the trolley do not pick the things from trolley and you assume you you assume the things so this is very common mistakes people make so be aware of that similarly not not having grip over your steps sometimes you do not have a grip over a b c d approach reflexes it's like reflexes then what what you are going to have you do not follow the step wise approach unnecessary step then you you are doing unnecessary step that are not needed for example I, i i want to give you an example of that for example you have not grip over your step in the asthma patient you say like okay i am going to pass two large iv cannulas this is unnecessary this is wrong because this is not the step step is that at this step you have to put some cannula which cannula it will be decided by the situation okay so uh, we do sometime unnecessary step for example another thing for example abdominal examination is in our circulation but when we are going to do some abdominal examination only whenever uh, there uh, is the some sort of trauma surgery otherwise in the circulation we do not include the abdominal examination if they they want to check you uh, disability for example if the glucose is low patient is unconscious and you are stuck in the abdominal examination you are wasting your time so you, you have to avoid that as well because you have to be very uh, clinician that is very quick and that is drawing according to the situation sometimes people do not perform gcs in non alert patient because of the rush because of you do not have the grip i'm going to talk about that later similarly uh, people remain robotic this is this is the biggest this is the biggest error people do i will tell in my all lecture again and again you have you have listened quite oftenly that people says this station was quite good but i don't know why it's failed because they have done that station so repeatedly and they have like mugged up every step however the small changes they make they are unable to identify that changes and and they kept on saying what they want to say so this is one of the biggest error remain robotic do not able to identify the significant event such as transfusion this is again one of the common failure for example if the patient says it is you suspect that he is having the transfusion do not identify the blood is going on and they kept it scanned they do not reveal it all the ways 
So what you have to do is you have to keep in mind, I will not miss any important significant step. What, what may come forget. This is very common uh, question. People do not ask, forget to ask about COPD before giving oxygen. Patient says, okay, I'm having shortness of breath. Patient uh, oxygen saturation is like 87. You do not ask about COPD, smoker cough. So, because we cannot give high flow oxygen to this patient because uh, this can lead to the uh, type 2 respiratory failure. So, that's why this is quite important. Do not mention the dose and route of administration. Emergency situation, you need to tell them route of administration. You need to tell them the dosage and each and everything because they want you to know about that. Lastly, do not offer senior and expert opinion and definitive management because they say they consider that we have saved the patient. Okay, our station is passed. It is not like that. You, you have to reach to this point as well. So this is very common mistake we have talked about. We have talked about the points we need to talk about. Okay, now we are coming directly to the A, B, C, D approach. Okay, regarding the A, B, C, D approach. Okay, let me tell you that for me, it is... Uh, actually, I I have not uh, look at the eye. I have put that, but it is not blue. Initial assessment. Initial assessment is quite important for you. I have put that in this approach. Initial assessment I. Okay, and I have put this smaller C before A B C D approach. Smaller C, because you should be. It should be in your mind. Though it is very less likely that they are going to assess this but you should know about that what it is so our approach will be i c smaller i c smaller a b c d e and f our approach is this approach is same a b c d e but what we are going to learn is i smaller c a b c d e and f why it is important i'm going to explain it to you so that you do not make any error so that you become a very safe doctor for them. What is initial assessment? Okay. So this, this orientation should be in your mind. For example, initial assessment is your observation. A for airway. Airway is when you introduce yourself and you check the next stability. This is, though it's not going to come in your exam, but you should know if the next stability checking is in the trauma patient in the airway. Okay. Breathing is all about your monitor and your breathing. In, in this, what sequence we adapt, look at the monitor. We see the any news chart over there. Um, we see the emergency trolley. Then we do the management, which is required. Then we take the history. History window is there. Then what we do, we look for the any notes, any wristband, any post-operative notes, any patient notes. We do the examination and we do the initial investigation. This is breathing approach. When they are going to, because you should know about these segments very clearly. When they want to check your breathing, they will keep you over here. You, you should know the sequence. But for example, they, the patient will be shortness of breath again and again, and you have to be revolve around this again and again. Similarly, regarding the circulation, again, you will look at the monitor, IV cannulation and sampling is there examination, management, and investigation. Then there is a disability. Regarding the uh, disability, I have a mnemonic for you people, a PGR. PGR is very common, uh, PGR postgraduate training. A PGR is your mnemonic. You should be familiar for this mnemonic, AVPU. Why it is AVPU? It is AVPU or GCS. Why I have not put the GCS over here? Because if the patient GCS is low, he is not conscious. We have already done in the first airway approach before the breathing. So here we should not, if the patient is alert, it is the AVPU score. A AVPU. On AVPU, my patient is alert. You should know this because uh, I'm going to talk about that because uh, uh, otherwise you, do, you need not to talk about the GCS. Otherwise, disability is related to GCS. Instead of GCS, we use AVPU. Okay. The second thing is pupillary reaction. You will, uh, to check the pupillary reaction, you need a light torch and it should be in your trolley. Blood glucose level. So you will be doing the blood glucose level and R is for review. So actually, these three are the things to be done 
and review is again A, B, C, D. You just need to have a look at the monitor and see the patient. And it is nothing. So, RPGR is your disability mnemonic, AVPU, papillary reaction, blood glucose, and review ABC. Then it is exposure. Exposure is head to toe. We are going to talk about that. And I, I, I need to have a complete examination of your for that. I need a chaperone. And we will be talking about that. It is like it is where you are assessing the patient completely. This is where, since D is our emergency, now it is not emergency, E is not emergency, E is to identify the cause, to not let anything go unnoticed, okay? Then is the further management, and the further management related to is, you have to give the final, your, uh, and, like final management. So this is our approach. Uh, though we have written this approach in a very elaborative way, and we are going to discuss the scenario by scenario. First, it is the initial assessment. In the initial assessment, what we are going to do, okay, when the patient uh, presents to you, it, it will be conscious or it will be unconscious, okay? This is the observation. You have not done anything. The, the call is you. It is the scenario is written. The nurse has called you to come and assess the patient. It is conscious or it is unconscious. If it is the conscious, okay? So then we will see it is stable. Or it is not stable. And how we, we can assess them, then we need to see at the monitor and all that. Otherwise, conscious and unconscious, we can see by observation, by talking. Okay, if it is unconscious, then we will be seeing the sign of life are present or not. What are they? This is your respiration, your carotid. You just have to put your hand on the carotid and listen to the chest. This is the one maneuver in the unconscious patient you have to perform if the patient is unconscious. This is the commonly people forget to talk. The patient is unconscious, people start ABCD approach. No, if the patient, there's no sign of life. Though, uh, for example, they, they are not to give it to you because if the patient has no sign of life, you will go for the CPR approach. In ABCD approach, they are not going to check it, but your step is important. The patient is lying unconscious and you, you go and you see and you should add one step in your ABCD approach. Just check the sign for life. What are they? You just palpate the carotid and bring your ear uh, near to the nose to listen the, and see his chest movement. This is one second step. And this, this will tell that you are not becoming robotic. Okay. So just, I, I want to add this step into your understanding. Okay. Now the patient is unconscious but there are signs are present it's the first assessment then you will see the stability and instability again and how will you do that abcd approach and the patient is conscious how will you see that stable versus unstable abcd approach okay we will follow the abcd approach all the way except if there is no sign for us we have to just check the signs of life are there or not dealing with the ob okay what is C? What is small C? I have put that small C. This is dealing with obvious circulation problem. There's a scenario if the patient is bleeding, you will not start directly your ABCD approach. You will stop the bleeding first. Okay. The smaller C is for the circulation. Otherwise, uh, it, it comes after uh, C. Um, circulation comes after B, but smaller C comes before if there is an obvious bleeding, obvious problem with circulation, and you can stop by putting the pressure or something. This is before. This is just for your knowledge. Okay. So, our other approach, the exam approach, uh, practically starts from, from here, airway. How you will check the airway? You will go and you will introduce yourself. Still, here it is observation. It is still an observation. Still, here it is observation. It will not take any time of your. You will just go and keep your eyes. You have to see these things. Otherwise, it will not take your any time. You will start your station from here. Hello, hello, Mr. Johns, because the Mr. Johns will be written over there. Hello, Mr. Johns. Uh, it's Dr. Hamid here. Can, can you hear me? If he is like mumbling or he is saying anything, even the mumbling comes out, like the, he says, oh, okay, the airway is patent. You, you will say, as my patient is mumbling, as my patient is talking, his airway is patent. So this is quite easy. Easy. So your airway will be patent. There is no scenario of 
not airway patents. Okay, Air, your airway will be patent everywhere. Even the scenario which are which are semi-conscious, this they, they mumble. So you will do the GCS. If they are semi-conscious, what you are going to do? You are perform the GCS. Here comes the GCS. If the patient is in the semi-conscious or mumbling, I'm going to tell you that how the, the um, how it is performed. GCS, I will make GCS easier for you. How you are going to do that? No, we are we we come directly to our breathing approach. Directly to our breathing approach. How will, you are going to do? What you are going to do? You are going to see at the monitor. You will go directly, go and see the monitor, and you will see two things: oxygen saturation and respiratory rate. Just two things. You have seen that oxygen saturation is where this is your judgment. After that, you will take an action. For example, which action it could be taken? For example, oxygen saturation is low. You will ask the patient question regarding the COPD. Do you have a smoker cough or could condition called COPD? If the patient is not talking, you don't have any option. You have to give the oxygen. The patient is not talking. If he is talking, you have to ask that one question only. You ask and give the oxygen and you will... What you are going to do here, you are going to the trolley, bring the non-breathable mask if the oxygen saturation is low and you are going to put on the face of the patient. Then the oxygen saturation will increase. If you say, just I'm going to give the oxygen, they will not increase the saturation. Okay? So you have to perform this. Go, open the trolley, bring that back and put it on the mouth. Okay? Then oxygen saturation will be fine. Okay? If... Keep in mind, you are doing some step and the things are not getting better. You, sh you should know that something's going wrong. I have not done that. Okay. Some, most of the time they increase or you have to go to the next step. Okay. Then take the action. You, what action you took? You went to the trolley and you see all these things present over there. You, you were, the thing you were needing was oxygen mask. You put the oxygen mask. Okay. Then other. Okay. For example, uh, uh, um, these are the things I have written over here. Uh, what you need to do is you need, need to put the mask and uh, you need to, and then again, you need to look at the monitor and then you have to, the, if the patient is stable, for example, they, he will say, okay, thank God, thank God, doc, doc I'm feeling better. You, you need to ask how you feeling now. Okay, then, then you, uh, history window is open. This is a very small history or you have to ask a very direct questions. The things, the, the written in your scenario, you need not to repeat. It is assumed that you know that things, okay? For example, over written something, it is the SOB patient. So for you, I have made some mnemonics, which we are going to discuss in the medicine scenario. These mnemonics helps you a lot. For me, scenario, it is like P Topa or uh, uh, P M.A. Holly family, D.S. Uh, Desa Tolly. This, uh, uh, this is a very detailed discussion because in the medicine scenario, I am going to make you learn this scenario, why it is important, why we are not doing the Socrates and Odipara. Instead, we are doing uh, Topa because P.M.A. Holly family because uh, this is the sequence of the questions you need to ask. The sequence is not disturbed. We are going to learn that. For example, you need to ask very direct questions from here. For example, the patient is symptomatic, he's asthmatic, you have to ask, you can ask the direct question, are you asthmatic? Are you known asthmatic? Do you have any long-term medical condition? So that you need to know, are you allergic to anything? What were you doing when your symptoms started? Like, gardening like how often are your symptoms? Do you have any hospital admission? Very direct, precise questions. Not very long history because you have very small time. And after doing that, you have to look at the wristband over here. Then you have to look any notes present over there, any inhaler with it, anything, like anything with that, you have to keep in mind the history. In the history window, you will look for everything. Like drug chart is there, any drugs are available over there. You have to look everything of that at, in this time in a very quick way. Uh, uh, like post-operative notes, uh, it could be bleeding scenario, post-operative notes could be there. So any muse chart, anything could be there and you, you should have a sharp look on all that in your history. Then it comes towards your examination, okay? Your examination, uh, uh, it is very common abbreviation, IPPA, 
like inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So what you need to do is again, be very quick. There are six areas you need to examine in your, we are dealing with the breathing. So you cannot wait. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. This is quite important. You need to ask proper permission. Okay. Mr. Matthew, I need to have your uh, examination. I need to do your like a uh, chest examination for that. We need to expose your chest. Uh, I will be providing you with a chaperone. I will keep in consideration or your privacy. You, you need to say that because this is your IPS. They are checking your IPS as well. Okay. The examiner might say, okay, assume that it is exposed. The permission has been taken. Then you can start, but you will not forget to asking this thing. Okay. Then maybe they, they do not ask you to perform all that. They just ask you to perform, but you should know all these four steps. First, you will see uh, eye inspection, scar, sinus, anything you will see. Then uh, palpation, you will ask for the tenderness. Is there any tenderness? That's regarding the precaution. You will take the step. This step, they are going to, to let you perform anyway. You need to pick up the step. This is like very much important. You need to pick up the step. Because uh, you, you are, uh, or then you will need to ask, I am going to tap your chest. You need to ask. I am going to uh, like tap your chest. If you find any discomfort, you, you please let me know. Then you will be percussing in six areas, comparative way, like one here, one here, one here, one here, and one is at the base of your lung, six areas. Similarly, when you are going to listen the chest, you are going to put the strength and you are going to listen it. If you are not doing this, they will assume that you have, uh, this is not the clinical, you have just uh, like mugged it up, like you have learned it by heart, so, step, the step with the step, if they need to assess you like any uh, case with the respiration, you need to use the step. This is quite important. Okay. And the finding will be clear. There will, what two things can come. One will be, it can be crackles or it can be wheeze. They are quite distinguishable. Crackle is grr, grr, and whistle is the wheeze. So it would be quite obvious. You are going to know about that. Crackles can't be in asthma. Similarly, these can't be in heart condition, in heart patient, it will be crackles. Okay. Um, so from here, then your examination is done. Uh, after that, uh, we will come uh, towards uh, the... Uh, Meanwhile, they, uh, they will be keep on checking your management as well. They will keep on checking your management. Meanwhile, uh, it is uh, because they can any, on any, any temptation will say, uh, okay, uh, okay, doc, I'm not feeling well, or the saturation will drop. You have to keep your eye on that. Then you, you will jump on the next step. What could be, it could be uh, point, uh, uh, 5 mg salbutamol via uh, uh, driven by the oxygen, driven by the high flow oxygen. So this will be your next step. So this will be the management. Okay. Then after the management step, you will be keep on doing by and by whenever you will be needing what you are keep on doing. At the end, in the management, you need to send some investigation to investigation. You just need to learn. In the breathing, two invest, there were two vitals and two investigation, X-ray chest and ABGs, X-ray chest and ABG. You are going to send it over here. And then if, if you find nothing over here, then you move to circulation. And you have done this, for example, breathing part, and you have managed it, and then you will move to the circulation, okay? Now we come to the circulation. In the circulation, what you are going to see on the monitor, you, now you, are, you need not to take the history because you have already taken the history. What you are going to do is direct C in the monitor. And in the monitor, you are going to see four things, heart rate, Blood pressure, blood pressure is quite important. The most important thing is blood pressure, temperature, and ECG. You, you just see the ECG is, is rhythm is normal and or not normal, not more than that. For example, in the uh, I have put here a picture. You, you can see from here, this is like you only get the idea because look, look this is not the norm. Uh, his uh, rhythm is not normal. You just get the idea of ECG, nothing more than that. The ECG over there, just the idea is not. It's rhythm is not normal. It is bradycardia, tachycardia. You just get the idea over here. Nothing more than that. Otherwise, you will see the blood pressure uh, and heart rate over here. Okay. 
and of course temperature as well because uh, the temperature will be uh, have will be given in the monitor as well or it, it can be given in the muse chart if if they want to check you that you know about the muse chart or not muse chart can be there so you should know that actually muse chart is alternative of your monitor monitor and muse chart or muse chart are the same things just that is um, the handwritten thing okay no no we come at the part of circulation we have what we we see four things after watching that four things okay after watching that four things uh, we we have seen that it is bradycardia tachycardia what is blood pressure we have seen that next thing is examination you will not take history over here because you have already taken the history after the b part what you will do just jump directly to the examination portion and what we will be doing in the examination for example if you find blood pressure low so what examination you will start you will start examination like looking at sinuses okay you will take his hand because uh, mannequin will be there it will be simen you will pick his hand you will watch the temperature you will like uh, with your hand you will see the temperature it is if it is the cold it will be quite cold okay uh, then you will see the capillary refill time how to see the capillary you you just like like this like this you will this push it and you will see and you will yes you have to tell them that i know what is the capillary time because it is important because it tell you uh, the the status of shock so so you have to do that similarly in the hand you are doing all these things in one hand you have picked the patient hand and you have taken the pulse the pulse is why it is important it is already given in the uh, heart rate is given but you will check the pulse because any irregularity if it is the case of uh, any for example atrial fibrillation is one case is with atrial fibrillation in our course so you need to check that and then you will be doing the cvs examination with which is you just pick your stat and you do the uh, listen the murmur on apex of the heart not four areas just go to the four areas if you suspect that it is the cardiac case for example it is the cardiac heart failure then you will then you will go for the four area otherwise you will just go to apex and listen to the murmur because we have to save our time okay this is examination this will not take a long time because i'm i'm just like telling you and i am explaining it it look like it is it, it will take a longer time you just have to pick one his hand and take your stat and go to directly to the cardiac area that's it and then you will only do the abdominal examination in the bleeding cases okay because abdominal examination is important if the surgery has already Yeah, like uh, you have already done the surgery and patient in post operative in that cases post op cases you will do the abdominal examination okay then abdominal examination must otherwise we are not going to do abdominal examination everywhere we are going to do i am going to tell where we are going to do abdominal examination and p uh, and genital examination genital and abdominal examination are actually the part of secondary survey which we are going to do in e part exposure part okay however in some cases for example a surgery has already been performed and patient in the post op and the come with hypotension you have been called then you will prioritize this before any other thing before like uh, uh, before e approach you will prioritize even before d approach you will prioritize abdominal examination over there okay then it comes to the management after doing this uh, exam uh, after taking Uh, looking at the monitor doing examination what you are going to do you are pass cannula you have to pass iv cannula which iv cannula it will depend ke, uh, which condition it is i have already explained it if you need to give a lot of fluid you will give as large as you could otherwise pink iv cannula okay okay after passing the cannula you will do the commentary i will send some baseline investigation and these investigation for example cross matching it is necessary blood grouping when when there is a bleeding case otherwise you will not be sending in the asthma case we are we are saying that okay i am going to send for cross matching and uh, uh, blood grouping 
they will know that you you are not coming clinically you are coming with your rata so in that case you need to be sure what your but however after passing the cannula you are going to send some investigations this is necessary after that whichever treatment is required you are going to give over here for example in asthma case because we need needle prick so uh, we have not done any needle prick all the we need to give like uh, iv hydrocorticoid to steron 100 mg we are going to give here through iv cannula after taking the sampling okay or for example in any the other case we need a large uh, bore iv cannulas and give a larger fluid but before that we are going to take the sample from the same iv cannula okay so which uh, which uh, iv cannula is will be passed it will depend upon the case we we are going to discuss in the cases because here we need to learn the approach okay uh which fluid how much fluid need to be given it should be given or not uh, this need to be discussed in the in every case for example the, in pneumonia and urosepsis case there there is a crackles there we cannot give much fluid what we do we do fluid challenge 500 ml over 15 minutes just to tackle with the hypotension otherwise for example if the bleeding is going on we are going to give a rush of fluid 1 liter normal saline okay so which fluid how to given it is quite important for us in in the management of uh, abcd approach in the management of uh, this acutely ill patient then there come the maintenance fluid you need to learn about the maintenance fluid as well when we have to maintain the fluid for example if the patient is with you he he need to do the surgery uh, he need to undergo some surgery you are going to keep in observation so we need to give 1 liter over the 8 hour uh, or we need to give the normal saline over the 24 hour this you need to learn in case by case okay similarly uh, which blood should, this is quite important look i have written it in a very bold like o negative blood group sometime in the c approach you give if the patient is going bleeding you give fluid the patient not getting better you give fluid as much as you could so they want to ask what you going to do next it is the o negative blood you will not say only i am going to give the blood because in the emergency trolley o negative blood is available and they are going to kept that hydrated until you speak when you say okay you have given the fluid his blood pressure is not raising so you will say no i am going to give two units of o negative blood okay and when it is the case you have already sent for the cross matching and you have asked for arranging after the cross matching four units this this is you, you it is in the bleeding case okay uh, test to order is uh, like here you will the special test you will order is only the complete ecg otherwise there is no test we are going to order in the circulation uh, except for the specific test this is the complete ecg you order complete ecg in circulation so here we check four things on the monitor we do examination and we do the management uh, you can see here main management is fluid in the b part main management what oxygen here the main by default management is fluid so you you need to know about that then we come the next thing that is the disability disability we have already talked about avpu avpu is stands for alert verbal pain and unresponsive so if the patient is alert you will not say he is he is alert on gcs you will say he is alert on avpu you will say avpu just avpu just like we say gcs similarly we say a v p u okay so you this in the morning will be in your mind what we need to check a v p u because if it is the gcs we have already done it on the above okay uh if the patient is unconscious and conscious then you will be doing a v p u pupil capillary and review we have already talked about this approach okay if on your if the pupil there is no scenario regarding the pupil but why we do check the pupil it is because it can be any overdosing it can be any dosing of uh, overdosing of heroin or anything any drug so however they check capillary glucose when you do the blood glucose level and this is quite important to tell you you will go and you will bring the glucometer and you will 
like kept it with the hand of the uh, mannequin uh, cement and then you will bring the strip you will bring out the strip put and you will do some time they want you to prick with the needle they want to know that you know how to do the noodle and, and, or not otherwise they will not increase the glucose level okay because in this scenario a is okay b is okay c is okay the problem is only with the disability patient is subconscious or mumbling so you, you will not find anything a, in a b c e so you have already done the gcs uh, i am going to teach you how to do the gcs then when you will be coming here you will start your management over here and the management would be uh, in the scenario we will see we have to give the insulin we have to give uh, the sugar, uh, the concentrated glucose level uh, this if we will not go he will not be conscious we will be studying in in the typical scenario okay then comes the exposure in the exposure you will inspect palpation you this this is just to say you will say it okay now i need to have a complete survey from head to toe for that i will be doing your general physical examination and examination of your abdomen and genital part if you have not already done that if you have not already done you did, you will mention it here otherwise if you have already done that in the bleeding scenario in then you will not mention that you will only say i will do the general physical examination from head to toe because you will not repeat anything okay and while doing exposure while doing like disability if you find any problem with the abcd approach i am repeating it you will go back okay so here you what you will see you will see examine the abdomen genital part you will insert any catheter if not catheter is there you will say i will i will put the catheter if if the required uh, you will maintain euthermia why i have put the euthermia because if the temperature is low you will say like uh, i will i will be covering the patient if the patient is in uh, like uh, uh, his temperature is high in during the exposure because why it is important uh, here because uh, in, in, there is a scenario acute limb ischemia in that ischemia you will be needing that okay then comes the further management the further management will stay same for all except few things you will change you will you need to explain this finding to the patient or to the examiner they will ask you they will ask you in the scenario talk to the patient or talk to the examiner but you will not be talking with both you will be talking with one okay you will explain your finding for example if if you are talking with with examiner what you, you are going to talk about my patient came with shortness of breath and uh, on assessment we found that she was he was having wheeze and this and that and after that we gave him solbutam uh, uh, oxygen and then we we need to give it the oxygen uh, uh, solbutamol 0.5 mg uh, 5 mg uh, and you will be explaining whatever you have done to the examiner and if you are explaining to the patient you have to explain that in another language so you need they will ask you to explain to what and you will be discussing what you are going to do further for example um, i am going to know all the senior we are going to do the further testing this and that and we are going to keep him under observation we are going to give him antibiotic or we are going to uh, run a few more tests we are going to run a ct scan the special things any special thing after uh, emergency is done you are going to mention over here so this format will stay the same the patient you need to reach till the further management you need to save at least one and half minute for this two is the like uh, ideal but one to one and half minute is the minimum because it carries marks you need to reach over here okay now uh, it is about the gcs because it is one of the difficult thing like most of the student finds i have tried to make it easier for you so that you can calculate the gcs in a quick way because otherwise everybody can do the gcs if if th this chart is in front of us but there is like less than uh, half minute time in which we have to calculate the gcs so we need some jugad some formula in by which we can do the gcs so here is the formula uh, calculating the gc vme so um, actually i voice motor 4 5 6 this is the score uh it is over here uh, everybody has read that in their course we are not going to discuss about it i am just want to tell you how to calculate the gcs okay the patient is in the semi conscious state how will you calculate the gcs this is the mnemonic v voice you will be calculating voice 
before then you will come to i then you will come to motor first question you are going to ask okay you have asked already you have asked okay mr Ma what's your name okay are you are asking where where are you 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 have introduced yourself my name is dr hamid i'm one of the up by working here can you listen to me mr john oh yeah you guys where 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 are you do you know where are we yeah where are you he will say okay i am uh, i'm in school if he says i am in school so uh it means he is saying he is confused so score is 4 he is he is he is confused because he is saying i am in school he is not saying saying i am in football if he says i am in football you ask where are we he says football so that means he he is saying anything which which, has, which carry no meaning however he is confused he 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 uh, he told you that uh, school that means the same class not hospital school so it is confused so score is 4 if he says you ask like where are we he says like aeroplane so he's inappropriate word so score is 3 so this is the most important thing you need to learn otherwise other thing you know that he's not speaking score is 1 incoherent speech he's not saying anything he is just mumbling you say he's mumbling so score is two. However, he is speaking the word, but it is inappropriate. So keep in your mind this example. Where are you? School or anything like that. The score is four. He is saying any other thing. It is three and below that is two. So you need from here, you will make the score of V, voice. For example, let's go. It is the most of the time it is four. Most of the time his score is four. So it can be four. It can be three. It can be five. He can say, okay, uh, 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 like uh, you ask him, he speak, uh, he's oriented. So it can be five. Similarly, the second question, you will see the eyes are open or not. You will come to I on the second step. Eyes are opening or not. If not open, you will ask a question. If the closed, can you open your eyes for me? Second question, you're after this question. Can you open your eyes for me? If the patient is opening eyes, look at here. Open eyes with voice three score. Spontaneously open, it is already four. We, we need not to ask this question. Okay? Okay. But if it is not open, we, we will check for the eyes. Can you open your eyes for me? Your second question should be if the eyes are closed. If can you open your eyes for me? If it is opening, okay. If it's not opening, you will ask, can you lift your hand for me? We we come here on the motor. On the third question, we came in the motor. Can you lift? Your hands for me. Okay. If he obeys your command, it is six. If he he is not obeying your command, then the fourth thing, it is the three are the question. These are the questions. The fourth thing is you have to apply some stimulus, pain stimulus, and you will be assessing two things together. For example, and you will say, okay, Mr. Matthew, whether he is in a semi-conscious, I am going to inflict some pain, it, it will be discomfort for you. I'm sorry. And, and you, what you are going to do is like, you can like uh, put your like hand, uh, like your thumb on the sternum or on, on his nail and you can push it hard. You can say, I'm going to inflict some pain. And if on the, if, if these both, no response on this and the pain on the pain, they, he open his eyes, it will be two score. And According to that, in the motor score, you have to calculate simultaneously. You need to know only two things. Most of the time, they check the, the, these two things. One is withdrawal and one is localize the pain. That localize is, for example, you have inflicting the pain over here. On this hand, I am, uh, this is localizing. I am bringing my hand over here. This is localizing. And when I am inflicting the pain and I am keeping it away, this is the withdrawal. So the withdrawal carries four marks and localize the pain carries five marks. So most of the time your GCS would be nine to 10. Keep in mind in the semi-conscious patient, they are not going to give you eight GCS because the eight GCS you need to call for the anesthesia and ITU department because he will be needing ventilation. He will be needing it uh, to put uh, invasive uh, breathing. Okay, so... 
so this is what the gcs is how do you have to calculate you need a practice for that you you really need a practice because you will be having to do all that in in almost less than half minute or half minute and you you need these question very quickly in your mind then you will be able to do the gcs for example there is a there are two scenarios of gcs one is the patient is post operative and he is unresponsive he is, you need to do calculate the gcs and very initial and other is sugar is low if the sugar is low patient is unresponsive uh, on the disability you will uh, be doing uh, your management however you need to do the, your gcs in a very early stage okay now uh, we have i have tried to cover the approach as a whole i small c this is just for you to know a b c d e what we need to do in a b c d e approach and f for further management no no it is the time to do our uh, scenarios we will be going through very quickly uh, because uh, this was the approach we have already talked about for example this is uh, the scenario is about yeah first scenarios are breathing scenarios the first scenario the most common scenario regarding the breathing is asthma scenario they will be giving you a scenario the patient comes in the in the emergency with the shortness of breath whatever could be the cause you have to rule out the cause the oxygen will be low it you have to again ask the same questions i have already in the breathing section here is the similarly then uh, history window will be open you will be ruling out the dd asthma pneumonia mi pulmonary embolism we will be asking the question uh, this will be covered in your medicine uh, scenario because what med need to ask is regarding that smoker cough this scenario you have uh, the smoker cough you need to ask before even giving the oxygen you will be asking regarding the fever to roll out the pneumonia you will be asking any chest pain uh, any dvt uh, any pain in your leg you will be asking these questions quickly this is your DV dd and then uh, again you will be looking all that penicillin uh, band or you will be asking any allergy and then you will be completing uh, seeing for inhaler this is the scenario this this scenario will come uh, this is a very common scenario it, it will come in your exam then again chest examination i have already show you how to do four steps okay uh, in smoker cough do we give some yeah yes we give we give it is 4 liter it is 4 liter oxygen we will give that oxygen you uh, uh, this is low flow oxygen 4 liter oxygen we give oxygen however uh, the cut off value is 88 not 92 here if if it is above the 88 we do not give any oxygen okay uh, we will be doing uh, please question answer session in the end you please write your question and hold your question so that uh now i need a continuity in the lecture so that we can cover all the uh, scenarios okay um okay the management step is over there first management step oxygen then nebulization driven via oxygen nebulizer mask you will say that oxygen driven by uh, nebul salbutamol 5 mg via nebulizer mask driven by oxygen okay and what is the next step these two step steps are together these if not ipratropium this is again nebulizer this is again ipratropium 0.5 mg this is the next step if it is not getting better you will give this okay sometime he, he, or and you will go and you will look into the trolley you will bring that with you otherwise they will not raise the uh, they will say okay most of the time they say okay there is no uh, no ipratropium bromide is available what you are going to do is then wherever the step is you will give hydrocorticosteroid 100 mg iv though you have not yet reach to the circulation where the iv cannulation is there you will do that why you will say okay i will do the iv cannulation and i will give this because they want to check that you deal with the emergency or not but most of the time they do that after you started your circulation the patient start get deteriorating and they ask you okay well you you have to say okay i will give apratropium bromide they will say okay there is no apratropium bromide then you will be doing is giving hydrocorticosteroid and after hydrocorticosteroid if the patient get worse you will give mgso4 magnesium mgso4 iv 2 g over 20 minute infusion this is over 20 minute infusion keep in mind and 
you will be discussing with the senior. From this step, your, your scope is getting low. The scope of the senior is coming from the MGSO board. However, there, there's a debate on this. Some people say, from here, if it is not responsive, you, if no response, IV aminophylline, 5 mg per kg. Here you have to involve the senior. You have to come, senior have to do that. But here you will inform the senior. MGSO4, when you are giving them, you will, you will discuss with the senior. And here you will involve the senior. The senior will do that. Because this is like uh, aminophy aminophylline. And after that, uh, you should know the last step is ITU admission in which intubation or mechanical ventilation will be required. So these are the steps or asthma management. So you need to know that route. You need to know about everything on this. In, in this circulation, there will be nothing. So you will not be stuck in the circulation. You will be doing only the breathing one. Okay. Just uh, keep hold. Uh, and if even if uh, they, 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 they have not asked you anything uh, on the circulation, uh, on the breathing, for example, the patient have become stable after nebulization. Even then, you will give a IV hydrocortication because you will do pink IV cannula. You will send for ABGs. Before, circul before coming to the circulation, you will already send two tests. I have already told you which test. One is ABG, second is chest X-ray. In circulation, you have uh, here you will give IV hydrocorticosterone. You will give it. Although you have make it stable before, but still you will give hydrocortic steroid on after taking the sample. Okay, no IV fluid. No IV fluid are required in asthma and heart failure. Okay, then disability there will be nothing again. Uh, 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 however, you are doing disability, and you have reached to the second step of management, and they have again make anything unstable. You will stop to the next step. Like for example. Maybe here they will check you. You are giving MGSO4, maybe. So you should know. Our ABC approach is going on and our parallel, in a parallel fashion, our management approach should be with us. Okay? They can check anywhere. So again, for the, uh, for the first, uh, you will talk to the examiner. This is the same thing we have already talked about. And here, uh, the same thing we have already talked about. Anything in your mind, just keep hold. Um, we will be opening question and session because uh, we need to give a quick, quick review to all the station. So the next station is pulmonary embolism, though this is not coming nowadays, but this station is there. That's why we will be very quick that, uh, regarding that. So similarly, this, this station will be same as that is heart rate will be and oxygen saturation uh, will be low because and the patient you will be taking the same breathing approach you will give oxygen and you will be doing the same steps as you have been doing in that however in this scenario during the history you need to ask about uh, uh, the possible causes you need to ask about the red flags you will be asking about the red flags the rest of the scenario will go on similar we have already done the scenario breathing scenario because it is the pure breathing scenario uh, if 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 there is a problem with hypotension, then um, uh, however, this scenario is not coming nowadays. However, you need to read this scenario. Uh, uh, you need to know this can come. Okay. Uh, um, what you are going to do in, in the management plan, you need, you need, you should know about the CTPA. You need to see, uh, know about the like D dimers and you should know about the management plan. And what is the management plan? I, I should tell you it is according to the patient status, it is the stable or not stable. If it is not stable and size on the CTPA is very long, long uh, uh, to usko TPA de de hai, tissue, tissue plasminogen activator, uh, you, you use that. Otherwise, what you need to, you need to keep the patient observation. You need to hyperanize the patient and anticoagulate the patient and keep patient under observation and rule out the cause. And this is, and you need to know about the, the like, uh, well score these are the questions however this scenario is not coming so uh, however this is among the stations you need to know about how to manage it okay it, it should be in your mind okay the next scenario this special this scenario is coming the heart failure scenario is coming however this scenario we suspect that this should be come this come with shortness of breath however this scenario is with dizziness the patient is with the dizziness so 
this scenario they have formed that they check your everything over here this is a common scenario the heart failure scenario is common this come with dizziness actually the patient is with the atrial fibrillation and the, it is the heart failure patient so if you do not take the history you will never know it is the uh, atrial fibrillation the atrial fibrillation is already going on is the chronic atrial fibrillation patient so you need to learn to take the history so you will start with your abcd he is alert is everything so airway will be patent you will be starting with your uh, uh, breathing approach similarly you you will be giving the oxygen because oxygen will be low and uh, uh, furthermore when you will be going to the circulation uh, no uh, chest part uh, you will auscultate the chest there will be crackles yes here will be the wheeze the scenario we have talked about uh, the uh, asthma scenario there will be wheeze here uh, it will be the crackle the crackles will be there okay whenever there is a crackle one thing come in your mind that we cannot give free fluids because it it, it will be dangerous for the for the patient yes exactly uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah we will give 4 liter oxygen via uh, ventri mask yes you are right uh, dr uh, thank you uh, dr amar Uh, this is with the COPD patient. If the COPD patient is there and saturation is below eighty-eight, we will be giving this. This we will be giving four liter of oxygen per minute via venturi mask. This is name of that mask. So this is. Uh, however, uh, the uh, it is not coming in our scenario. It is uh, our scenario. There is no COPD scenario, but you should know they can make a swing. Okay, so you should know about that. okay heart failure scenario in the heart failure scenario the thing should be in your mind you can kill the patient the cause of the failure of this station is you can give the fluid for example his blood pressure is low his his blood pressure is very low or low you cannot give the uh, to raise the blood pressure we can give the support but we cannot give the fluid over here the fluid is prohibited in the heart failure scenario because he is already going in the overload so we cannot give the fluids so okay so first of all we need to know about the scenario you need to diagnose it because crackles is with other scenarios as well for example the crackles is with pneumonia scenarios with sepsis scenario there is there are crackles so that it can be mixed na okay so we need to be very uh, in this scenario uh, of the heart failure scenario the history is quite important like oxygen saturation low we have given the oxygen we will take the history in that we will be knowing that he is going atrial fibrillation and he is having heart failure he is he will tell you that, that i am having heart problem and you will be asking the question and you will be asking the scenario the uh, specific question of the heart failure for example pedal edema and and all that you will be asking that question then you will be Uh, knowing about uh, uh, this case okay this thing the window of history i am not explaining to you because uh, this we will be doing in medicine scenario in a very elaborate way here you will be using only tabulation of that for example only the quick questioning the direct questioning okay that's why i'm not explaining here because our focus is somewhere else however in the history window you will take the history otherwise you will not know that what case it is you will take a quick history apart from the notes they are given you okay in the examination again you will find the bilateral crackles this is one against clue it cannot be unilateral crackles because in the pneumonia scenario it can be unilateral crackles here bilateral crackle because heart failure uh, cannot be with the uh, unilateral crackles it is always bilateral crackles in pneumonia it can be bilateral crackles but in the heart failure scenario it means it will always be the bilateral crackles okay then on the circulation part again we have already done and in this circulation part we will be listening our four areas and we will be doing this pulse and we will be seeing because it is because of the atrial fibrillation we are asking the question regarding the atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation is important in two scenarios here and there is acute limb ischemia because in that it is also disturbed with atrial fibrillation 
So in these two scenario, atrial fibrillation is quite important. So you will be listening the murmur of your heart and you will be checking for a only the scenario in our syllabus we are covering in which we will be listing four areas of your heart. Two, two aortic areas, uh, one mitral areas, um, mitral area, apex of the mitral area, two aortic area and pulmonary area. We will be listening in, with the staff four areas. Rest of the thing will be normal. You will be ordered full ECG and regarding the management plan, you will pass IV cannula pink. Look, I have put it pink. Why it is pink? Because you are not going to give the fluid. Okay. If needed to give some medication, you will be giving through the pink IV cannula. So you need not to put like large IV cannula. Similarly, you will be sending um, blood for this all flammatory organ and all that. No IV fluid. No IV fluid over here. Okay. Okay. They, they will be checking uh, over here. You will have already made the stable patient. If you have in this patient, clue is you will not let the patient die. If you are not let, letting the patient die, you will pass this station. Then you will go to the disability and you will be doing all uh, four in a quick way. And then we come to the management and regarding the management again, uh, you will be telling all that to the examiner or the if it is the examiner, you will be telling the management. I have already written over there. You are going to read that by yourself. And uh, then uh, what, what you are going to do is you are going to tell that we are going to have a cardiology review. This is the senior involvement. Uh, we are going to arrange for echocardiography. Uh, okay. And keep in mind, after doing that, you have to manage it at some way. If the crackles are there, the, you, you need to give the IV frusamide there. After doing that management, you will give the IV frusamide. And, and it will be, uh, you will be saying uh, diuretics. You will go to the trolley, you will pick the frusamide and you will be keeping it with the patient. Or if still it is not improving because it is with the atrial fibrillation, you will give some support. What is that support? That is digoxin. By the, uh, digoxin, we are uh, making the heart to pump more. We are not giving, the hypotension is not because of uh, uh, any blood loss. So we need to give some, uh, so for example, fluid. It is because of heart is not pumping. If heart is not pumping, we will be giving some frusamide along with that digoxin. And we will uh, anticoagulate the patient. Why anticoagulate the patient? Because uh, atrial fibrillation is going on. The clot can be formed, and it can do any other. Uh, it, it can do any uh, lead to a, uh, any pulmonary embolism. It can lead to any acute limb ischemia. So this is the management. So regarding the management, the point in your mind should be frusamide. It is digoxin, and it is anticoagulation. And anticoagulation is not for the heart failure. Uh, it is actually for the atrial fibrillation because the atrial fibrillation is going along with that. So this is, this is one of the difficult scenario. Uh, most of the students find uh, this scenario difficult. It is regarding the management because they get confused because the patient is hypotensive and they have in your mind in the hypotensive patient, we have to give the fluid. Yes, we have to give the fluid, but it's not always the case. In the heart failure scenario, you will not give the fluid because you will give some inotropes. For example, digoxin is inotrop. You are giving inotrop to, to, uh, to, because the heart is not pumping well. Then you will be involving the senior and you will be doing all that other things. Okay. This is, we have, uh, until now, we have already uh, uh, done with the, uh, breathing scenario, then it is the mixed scenario. Mixed scenario is uh, hospital acquired pneumonia, urinary tract infection. This is the, I am going to teach you one scenario regarding this. This is the sepsis actually. You need to know about the sepsis separately. Uh, scenario, you are going, you are going to read the scenarios. It can be confusion. It can be shortness of breath. Patient can present with any of these symptoms. Okay. You, it can be confused. You have to follow your approach, A, B, C, D, E approach, I, A, B, C, D, E approach. And, okay, we directly come to airways, patent, breathing. Again, we, we will say that uh, yeah, oxygen saturation, if the low, you will give the oxygen after asking the question regarding the COPD. Then again, you will be checking all that thing you have already done. But except oxygen in this scenario, uh, these are the scenario with sepsis they will check your circulation more. Keep in mind, they will not 
make you stuck in the breathing they will bring you to the circulation they will check your circulation again the patient will be hypotensive because they want to check your circulation more because, because yes if the oxygen saturation is low you will give the oxygen but when you reach to the circulation in a quick way after doing performing your or method then you will pass the iv cannula you you have already suspected you have talked to the patient you know that it is some infection is going on they will check what you are going to send you have sent for the inflammatory marker or lactate level or not the key word here is you have sent for the lactate level or not because sepsis give 3 take 3 i am going to teach you what it is but they want to check specific thing okay they here they want to check only two thing you have follow the order or not you have seen on the circulation okay blood pressure is low what you are going to do i am going to give the fluid okay okay give the fluid how much fluid i have said high crackles are there okay when you are listening to the heart sound for example pneumonia patient crackles are there you cannot give as much fluid as much you want you want your fluid to be in the veins not in the body because the circulation is compromised so you will rush the fluid you will give 5 500ml of fluid in 20 minutes rush the fluid but bolus this is called bolus of fluid okay so here in this scenario it is important quick fluid but come less fluid in this scenario quick fluid but less fluid this is the key and the investigation you are going to send this is the key of these scenarios okay uh, otherwise you are going to ask the same question on the history you are going to get the ideas i am not repeating because you are going to read by this on your own they are they can make some change i want you to learn the approach if this is the case what you are going to do in the breathing only you will you will find you will find crackles and do not get confused that it is the crackle it is the heart failure crackles can be here okay crackles it can be unilateral crackles it can be bilateral crackle if it is the unilateral pneumonia it is the lobar pneumonia it will be unilateral crackles and if if they give you unilateral cracker it is more good for you because you will not get confused that okay then you will um, uh, take the history you, you will find the history window then you will be doing all examination on the circulation fluid this is fluid challenge we call it fluid i will give but you will give i will give the fluid challenge. i will pass i will pass large iv cannula here it is the large iv cannula largest why because we have to give the fluid in the quickest way because quickest way we will give the more it will stay in our veins it will not go to the lungs because the crackles are always there okay i, I hope i have made make this very clear to you because this is this is the thing they want to check in you do you know about this management or not nothing else okay what investigation you are going to send along with okay i am going to send for i am going to send for from iv cannulation i am going to send for uh, baseline like fbc urea electrolyte glucose inflammatory marker is quite important here you need to ask inflammatory marker and lactate level do not never forget to say lactate level in here because this is part of sepsis screen what is sepsis screen we are going to talk about then uh, you are going to uh, another clue i am going to give here is on in the disability you will find nothing there will be nothing on disability but you will be doing all that patient will be alert pupil everything will be and after on exposure on exposure you will say in here i will pass i will catheterize the patient why i am i am not opening in the question answer session because i am i'm just telling because the time is short i have to cover all the scenario in a quick way it is i know um, many of you know because you have to monitor the urine output so you will say it it is um, it is it is very much important in the exposure session you will say i will catheterize the patient you can say above as well uh, um, while you are in the circulation because it is important so uh, the, it, it these are the keys to tell that i know to, how to manage this patient okay then we we come on the further management section on the further management section you should know give three take three okay first of all uh, you will say um, whatever ever is your assessment you will involve the senior here you will involve the senior for 
because it is dangerous the condition is dangerous you have done already but you could you will involve the senior you have taken given the oxygen already fluid challenge iv antibiotic iv antibiotic you will start the anti antibiotic where here other two things you have already done you will start antibiotic over here because which antibiotic you will not name the antibiotic it is according to the uh, protocol of the hospital protocol iv antibiotic what this is give three and what is take three lactate level blood culture and urine output you will monitor the what you will do here you will monitor the urine output you will send blood culture already you along with the lactate level i'm sorry i have not mentioned that the blood culture will be sent at that point as well other thing you will do in the uh, before starting the circulation you will take the sample and you will send for everything inflammatory marker along with lactate level blood culture and what we you will do here you will monitor urine output because it is quite important and uh, it is important if it is the pneumonia case you should say that i will we will be doing the curb score it is it is good for you you say we will do the curb five score they will not ask uh, go into the detail but they they will have the idea that you know about the curb 65 score what it is because this is actually the prognostic score then you have to manage the patient and all that you will mention it it your in your management further management the curb 65 score okay so this is all about uh Uh, sepsis scenario sepsis scenarios can be like with the uti it could be like pneumonia the patient was you have treated with something else and it was getting better suddenly gets deteriorated so you should know this scenario how to deal with it next section is anaphylaxis anaphylaxis section uh, i had already put that with the asthma scenario later on i i i brought it down because actually we have already done circulation approach breathing approach but in the anaphylaxis approach we will be using both that's why i brought it down in the anaphylaxis approach it it is the penicillin it is the blood transfusion two two it can be any of two this quite easy scenario now it should be easy for you because we have already done the circulation approach we have that already done the breathing approach okay in the anaphylaxis the scenario i'm not going to like read for you you are going to read it just the patient has get operated he is taking he is on uh, in in the ward and you you get the call you are not told that he is going blood transfusion or not you need to explore the clue is that they want you to explore they have not told you that the blood transfusion is going on you need to explore this is the clue of this scenario he underwent a pendectomy and they call you the patient is not feeling well and you come you see he is having shortness of breath let's suppose this is the scenario yeah. okay i i don't want to make you robotic i want you to learn regarding the inside what is the inside they they can change the scenario i we don't mind this change the scenario we we should have our approach okay okay again a b c we will see the patient is conscious or not we the, the, the same scenario okay then we will be uh, okay the patient is talking airways patent similarly looking at the monitor oxygen saturation low we will not change the approach similarly will be going on one thing uh, here it is important uh, the thing which are quite important for you to know i'm going to tell you history window you are asking the same question about asthma and aphylaxis copd anything because shortness of breath it is shortness of breath you will not know what it is because it could be shortness of breath because of asthma it could be a patient with asthma with the copd it could be pulmonary embolism trust me last day i had an interview uh, i i i want to share this experience with you i don't know they they slack me or not i it was my first interview and the patient was with copd copd patient history and uh, it turned out to be the patient with pneumonia and the patient come other day with shortness of breath and with deteriorating of his sign and this was pulmonary embolism and i i was thinking about the sepsis and he gave me the clue of d dimers otherwise i could not reach over there because it can be pulmonary embolism because the patient is sick it can okay what you will see in your mind you will tell them i i know all that you will ask the question in your in the window okay then you will be uh, checking for the wrist band quite important here quite important you will not forget to check the wrist band okay you will be checking for the patient notes patient is get operated you should because they two are the scenario in which patient note is quite important one is the post operative pain scenario or one is this one 
patient has already got operated you should know that he has given penicillin or not maybe it is written he has given penicillin and penicillin allergic okay or he has gone any blood transfusion you will check the patient note if you do not check the patient note in this scenario they will consider you templated trust me if you are not checking the wrist band in this scenario they will consider you templated so these two points are quite important in it okay what we will do we will be asking the question okay we we came to know that it is the blood transfusion trust me over there the blood transfusion will be going on they want to check you that you have identified or not the blood will be sconded they will not keep it in front of you that will be hidden somewhere and blood will be with that what you will do they want you to check that either you stop the blood or not if the blood is going on and you start your abcd approach and after the history you give oxygen and blood is going on and you are giving like uh, all the things uh, circulation you are maintaining the sport and all that and blood is going on and they are going to fail you so these are the key points you have to tell the patient okay i am going to stop the blood first of all and send it back to the laboratory for rechecking and okay th this is enough you need not to go more about that other thing you have during your examination during your examination either here or in circulation you need to check any rash you need to check the rash because they have given already the rash the rash is there you need not to forget about the rash the rash should be in your mind if you have found any any anaphylactic scenario it could be penicillin it could be blood transfusion you need to see for the rash okay then then other are other is your management other management is you have given the oxygen after that after oxygen again if it is not getting better you will give what salbutamol similar in the asthma patient i'm not going to explain it through which mask nebulizer mask same asthma patient scenario you will manage it like giving it salbutamol they have checked you breathing somewhere now they are going to check you circulation in this okay then again you will check for x ray and abg similar you will send uh, abgs and x ray and in circulation again you will part two largest cannulas two largest cannulas one not one because you need to give a lot of fluid in it because it, it could be anaphylactic shock it, it is an anaphylactic shock and one thing more important here in the management if it, it is your choice because i have read uh, i have, because uh, when i was taking exam Uh, some of our opinion that yeah, adrenaline should be given after stopping the blood transfusion this is good as well no problem with that you can give because you have to give it uh, im it is not however uh, uh, because the shock level is assessed over here so i would prefer to give it here because the actual shock level is assessed here after checking blood pressure because the other uh, it uh, adrenaline is not uh, for shortness of breath it is for shock maybe shortness of breath not shock so we should i think we should give adrenaline over here after passing the iv cannula after passing the iv cannula sending or sampling cross matching uh, here cross matching is quite important here cross matching is quite important because you need and blood grouping is important because you you need to learn what has happened with the blood transfusion okay if it is the blood transfusion you need to do the cross matching and sampling and uh, blood grouping then then you will be giving normal saline as fast as you could it is 1 liter normal saline as fast as you could okay then uh, before that before that you will be giving im adrenaline here the problem is that the people what people do the common mistake is they give iv adrenaline and patient die iv adrenaline it is the cardiac arrest it is not with the shock patient in in this anaphylactic shock patient it is the im 0.5 mg 1 in 1000 preparation and it is im i am repeating it it is im it it, it is never iv in this scenario it, it it can be iv but it is on the very later stages and it is not you who can give that it is in the itu so do forget about that this is only in only in the cardiac arrest patient for us not here okay then we have make the patient stabilized we have checked the circulation we have checked for the breathing the patient is stable then we we will not even yes one thing is important when you are doing the disability 
then anything you find it like patient is having uh, his blood pressure is dropping and he's not still stabilized you will repeat i am adrenaline after 5 minutes you you should say they will check it that adrenaline you i am you have given you are repeating it or not because you need to repeat it you, because maybe it is they for example it is the circulation is not getting better you have given the uh, the circulation support you will repeat it they they can check it they they can check it the, uh, whether you know it or not that you need to repeat the adrenaline okay then again exposure in this scenario exposure had to to exposure is quite important again for example sometime you you forget rash over there you will find rash over here they will give you rash over here for example you have not checked the rash on the chest examination uh, in this scenario in you will find the rash because for the rash you will give uh, uh anti histamine as well you will give anti histamine as well then again in the further management nothing similarly any specific treatment is you will give hydrocorticosterone anaphylaxis you will after doing this you will give uh, because iv canola is there you will give 200 mg hydrocorticosterone you can give that along with adrenaline you will give that there do not wait till end if there is any problem you sh you should give hydrocorticosterone over there okay uh, is next step of management after adrenaline is high voy hydrocorticosterone and if even is stable you will give hydrocorticosterone in the asthma patient and in the shock patient even though you have made the patient stable you will give hydrocorticosterone in the further management otherwise in your step wise approach you will use it over there okay this is because hydrocorticosterone has to be given and here it is 200 mg anaphylaxis it is 200 mg and there it is 100 mg okay uh, and here this is antihistaminic you will give antihistaminic if the rash is present you will give antihistamine uh, now otherwise uh, you this is uh, this is the other step you need to know that blood bank uh, you will contact the blood bank and uh, you will uh, ask false serum triptase this is all steps are for the advance uh, uh, to checking where there is a error what error has went and the last step in here is you will call the senior and itu if you cannot manage the patient till this step you will call the senior and you will arrange uh, for itu admission uh, because this patient other step whatever the steps are required that has done in the itu not by you okay this, this scenario uh, we are till yet we are done with uh, uh, sepsis the third there are three scenarios regarding the bleeding regarding the bleeding scenario there are three scenarios one scenario is uh, in emergency department 65 presented with hand metamis one is upper gi bleed two are post operative bleed these are quite a bit different scenario this is totally with the circulation these are circulation scenarios for example what you need to uh, this is in my exam with hematemesis scenario was when i took the exam this was there so uh, in in this scenario again you will follow the abcd approach oxygen will be low because the bleeding is if the bleeding is going on uh, or the if you need to ask um the bleeding is going on in this scenario the patient has already undergone an endoscopy and uh, uh, this uh, he again comes with this and what you need to do is you need to stabilize the patient in the bleeding scenario in the breathing except for the oxygen you will do nothing and you will jump after taking the small history in in this history is a bit different because it is the second time presentation and you will take the follow up history and that history is about that history you will be asked what they have done what they told you and what they did and and that you you will be asking a few questions and then you will be asking related to his history what you do actually this is the uh, can patient with uh, stomach ulcers and there will be some problem he'll be using a uh, uh, ansets or anything like that so you will be ruling out that and after that in the history Uh, you will find nothing in the breathing only maybe oxygen is low and asking after copd you will get oxygen on the circulation scenario what they want to know about you uh, you will give the uh, circulation part you will pass the iv cannula and you will be doing 
they want to listen you will send for cross matching number 1 number 2 blood grouping and number 3 arrange four unit of blood they they want to listen this from you because this is the bleeding scenario in all three bleeding scenario they want to listen this because after iv cannulation you have done this specifically or not and you have passed the largest iv cannula or not because here you will be needing to give the largest iv cannula means available it is not orange you can orange gray green gray not green okay which will is where you will pass the largest iv cannula take the sampling and after uh, doing that you will uh, be pass, uh, giving a, as fast as possible normal saline and here they want to one thing very important they want to listen it from you that you uh, what is the next step what is the next step because you will say here i have mentioned in the abcd scenario it's not improving you have already passed one liter you will say i will infuse two units of o negative blood you will say o negative blood you will not say blood o negative blood that is in the emergency trolley and you will go pick and put it with the patient similarly if you are giving normal saline you will bring it from the trolley and you will hang it on the on the stand and then it will be start increasing otherwise i think uh, uh, this is important group cross matching and for you, you have already sent for cross matching blood grouping and arranging four unit and in emergency you have two unit of blood you have already given them and this is all about this scenario there is nothing and last thing they want uh, everything will be staying the same last thing they want to listen from you is that you have done the abdominal examination or not in this abdominal examination is important because epigastric pain you in epigastric pain you you need to do the abdominal examination you should do this abdominal examination uh if it is the post operative it is the genital as well uh, if it is the upper gi bleed you need to do the abdominal examination you can do it in the circulation in or in exposure but it, it is the better to do in circulation it is always better because maybe you will not be reaching to that point however if have you done abdominal examination in the circulation over here you will pass you will get pass okay last thing they they want to know for in the further management they want to know that you have diagnosed it upper gi bleeding from the stomach ulcer it could be he is taking this thing second you will referring in gastroenterologist in the no, next four hours they want to listen this from they want to listen from you you are you are referring you are uh, it is not referral you will not say the refer you will say you will arrange a visit of gastroenterologist and they are going because he, you are in the specialty clinic okay so they they are going to come and they are going to assess okay and the rest is their part and you are going to do two abdominal x ray and rect x ray chest these two things you are going to do by yourself along with all that monitoring and other thing uh, why it is important it is important because you you want to see if there is any perforation or not so these two things you will do and medicine uh, you have now save the patient Uh, you will give iv uh, omeprazole this is the all thing you need to do is these important points you need to keep in mind in this scenario okay rest is the same next is the post op hypotension the the scenario is the same post operatively inside bleeding is going on the the clue in this is same everything is same like the previous bleeding scenario in this scenario the only one clue is there have you done the abdominal examination or not you have you have examined the wound or not it's everything will be the same for example if it is the hypotension and you have see the wrist band or not because you have seen the patient notes or not it is the post operative patient you have seen the patient notes or not it is important here wrist band is you have seen that or not similarly in this patient you have examined the wound or not because if the for example if the bleeding is going on will you stick to your abcd approach no you will stop the bleeding first you will say i am going to shift the patient on emergency bed in the operation theater call the surgical team they are not going to give it to you because it is not in the station because you need to know however if you do not do the step you will be found a template 
because how could you know that uh, the bleeding is going or not and you are running with your abcd approach and the patient uh, is going on internal if the patient say i am having i am having um, a pain over the wound still patient is hypotensive it can be internal bleeding so you are going to arrange an ultrasound so so this should be in your mind you are going to a fast scan you are going to call for surgery at once okay, come and assess the patient you are a safe doctor you are not going with your approach uh, if this type of station comes for example post operative patient with the hypotension whatever the surgery is it can be hysterectomy it can be appendectomy doesn't matter whatever it is it it is the post operative short with the shortness of breath you have done the, with the breathing and in the circulation part you have not examined the abdomen you have not watched the wound and you have not seen any bleeding you have not examined the wound this station is going to be failed every station they have put something very much clear otherwise this is like look at the chart look at the band look at the drug chart this is quite important for you because you can on your own you cannot say that this cannot be anaphylactic shock because you need to look at these things then you will be able to see that this is bleeding operation this is the bleeding on the patient notes okay otherwise uh, an abdominal uh, you will okay in this patient it is i think this is the post hysterectomy patient uh, let me see laparoscopic hysterectomy patient okay so you will you will see the wound you will see the genital parts as well you cannot miss the genital parts here in the circulation part okay rest of the you see management is the same as we have recently done in the bleeding scenario other is the same nothing change then uh, uh, on the uh, exposure scenario uh, um, similarly if anything is left behind you are going to see okay in this scenario talk to the examiner you you will say that this was done and again speak to you might to go to the theater another stop the bleeding if you find any abdominal pain he is abdominal pain he is like uh, giving uh, okay one thing is you are giving everything he is not getting better that mean internal operation is going on you should know i am going to talk call the senior and we are going to um, call the surgery department who, who did the surgery so that they can go ahead ah uh, okay postpartum hemorrhage it is the same scenario however in this scenario problem is that the patient is mumbling so you have to do the gcs i have told you how to do the gcs here you need to do the gcs in the very start this is the first scenario where you have to do the gcs okay or rest of the things are same you have to go, go patient is drowsy and mumbling so you will do the gcs in the start and then you will go for look at the notes wristband same approach nothing change only the problem is that you forgot to do the gcs patient is mumbling and you and next thing in the abdominal examination there will not be abdomen uh, abdominal pain they will tell you uterus is floppy when you will be palpating the uterus on the abdominal examination they will tell you abdomen it is the floppy okay but if you do not do that they will not tell you okay and similarly uh, you what you are going to do is the similar in the first step normal line in the next step blood and you will ask for this and you will tell them i am going to do the uterine massage okay because it is the postpartum hemorrhage patient postpartum hemorrhage patient so you are going to do the uterine massage and after that you are telling them i am going to give him iv oxytocin so this is the management difference after managing the patient for example relieving his emergency when you are going to uh, other thing is that when are when you are going to give him the uh, like his emergency is over for example uh, his blood pressure is normal then patient will start talking then then you need to keep in mind that you need to give the uterine massage and you need to give him oxygen okay give her oxygen in this scenario there is one more question and that is already given over there this is uh hand to the crash team hand to the hand over to the crash team is written over there i'm just going to tell you a little bit of that it is already uh you will raising the leg you will doing the uterus uterine massage and this raising the leg you can apply any bleeding scenario any bleeding scenario raising the leg you can apply okay this is 
the handover protocol you need to see the four things introduction situation background assessment and recommendation you you just read it you will know that it is quite important this is like give your introduction to the crash team they will tell you will not have to talk to the patient or to the examiner they will say hand the hand over the patient to the uh, crash team so you will introduce yourself you will tell the situation the patient was this, this what was the background it was prima griva it was multi gravida and this and that then what was your assessment and what is your recommendations that what what should be done that's it this is all about uh, um, about this uh, scenario there are other uh, thing which you need to know about this is uh, you need to uh, if the catheter is not there you will put the catheter again over in this scenario in the disability uh, in in the exposure scenario because you it's a bleeding scenario you need to monitor the output urine output again um, raise the leg is important in here uh, similarly uh, you need to give some other uh, trans examine examic acid if the uh, still uh, it is going on but you need to know it is the first uterine massage then oxytocin then it is the trans examic acid that, and then if this is uh, they are not going to reach over there then the fresh frozen plasma this is all that you need to know okay or last thing is if it is not getting then you need to ask for the surgery team that's what we need to know about till the end okay now we come towards the disability scenario this is quite simple scenario nothing will patient will be unresponsive special note uh, manikins uh, patient will be admitted in the low respiratory tract infection hypotensive diabetic she, it is written over there is diabetic so you will be it is unresponsive and what you will be do you are going to perform the gcs whether they can they can give you uh, okay he is nine on gcs go on but you will start doing gcs again after doing gcs uh, 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 they, if uh, the window is not for example for example is not talking you are not going to ask anything because is not talking you are going to go for the i'm going to do the examination you are going to do the chest examination you are going to do then the circulation examination you are going to in this scenario you are going to do everything quickly because there is no history patient is not talking if the patient is not talking what you can ask you can ask nothing you 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 can only see the notes actually point is that in this this is common scenario this comes i am telling you this is coming in the exam they want to check disability how do you perform in disability for example disability you need not to do the gcs q why you have already done all they have given you the score is this on the gcs pupil you will see the pupil this is important you will do they will tell you the this score they will tell you the score of glucose then and you need to pick you need to pick and you need to prick and you need to bring the lancet and you you swab and all that they require you to do all that okay on the manikin and then when you find that what you are going to do is you are going to do 75 ml of 20% iv glue this you need to this you need to learn and after 5 minute you need to repeat this uh, you after 5 minute sorry you need to repeat the glucose test if it is low you need to repeat this again this is the clue giving glucose now okay doing test giving glucose repeating test giving glucose this is important they want to check whether you are aware of that steps or not other everything is all right no breathing problem no circulation problem okay exposure you will be doing uh, uh, everything like you will ask to do exposure similarly here it is important this is the small scenario here you will take the history when you will be doing this the history you will take over here it is important people think that history is not required here in this scenario history is required in the further management you will take whole history in further management slide he is hypoglycemic you will ask about he have missed the meal whatever the patient has already done you will take all that then here you will doing the counseling of the patient you will repeat the glucose here if not already repeated over there and you will even 
telling that you should keep the glucose with you. You you uh, long acting carbo. You should keep uh, do uh, eat long acting carbohydrate. And what you will do if it is better? If it is not still getting better, you will. Uh, uh, for example, you 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 need to go to the glucagon. Okay, if it's not getting better, the next step is always. Uh, uh, in in this scenario, uh, it is glucagon, but uh, um, most of the time, um, uh, in our scenario, they want to check your history taking skill in this scenario as well. After taking you history, you you. Tell the patient no. Uh, you, you know, tell about the meal. You you can eat uh, long acting uh, 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 like a sandwich and all that. And you need to take the history of his uh, any change in medication. And then you will tell the patient because he's in the emergency. You are taking an emergency. You need to review to with your diabetic nurse and. Uh, you need to talk about the recognition of symptom and prevention of hypoglycemia. This is quite, this we are going to learn in the medicine. Because this station is a half medicine station. Half it is emergency. So, because you are going to, nothing to do in B and C, in disability, you are quickly going to do and you are going to take focus history over here. Okay? That is the only, uh, like, uh, clues I want to tell you regarding this scenario. And uh, then the next scenario is regarding the urosepsis. This is, uh, this we have already done it. Uh, this is uh, stable patient. Now the stable patient scenarios are coming. Three are stable patient scenarios. This is same as we have done, done the sepsis patient. This is in the sepsis. However, the stable patient, you will, you will still follow your OB ABCD approach. Here, you will still follow your ABCD approach However, you will do that quickly because patient is stable. You will look at the monitor, you will follow the approach and in this, the patient will be stable. Otherwise, and in this station, you will be more taking the history. And in, in the examination, you will uh, see uh, the, uh, the catheterization, you will examine is because it is the prostate scenario of the patient, uh, Actually, the prostate problem, the patient has the prostate. So, uh, the, actually, he has got the urosepsis, okay? So, this is the stable patient. The problem is that is the only difference is this is the stable patient. Otherwise, you will follow the sepsis approach. Give three, take three, nothing more than that because you need not to give any, uh, any rush of fluid or anything. You will take proper history and you will manage it like because there is uh, he is stable patient. You need not to give oxygen. You need not to give the rush of fluid because he is already stable patient. Okay. So you will keep it in emergency. You will uh, all uh, do all the, uh, we have already done this scenario. Problem is that we will not be doing the steps we require to stabilize the patient. We will be managing it definitively. That's it. Uh, if you find that his blood pressure is on the lower side, you will give IV fluids, antibiotic, and talk to the senior, you will not rush for anything. Um, nothing else you need to about worry about that. Post-op C-section pain. This is the different scenario. Post-op, everything is all right. You will, you will take history. Here, no need to do even the ABCD approach. I don't know, but uh, white academies have put this scenario here uh, in the uh, ABCD approach because this is the stable patient post-operative pain. However, uh, I think they have put it because they ask with the mannequins. So in this way, you still, you just need to go and ask the pain score. Like pain, we do the Socrates for our, it is the Stupa KRS, Stupa KRS, our mnemonic, I'm going to teach you in a very well way what it is. You, you are going to take the proper history. In this, important is to look at the post-operative notes and drug chart because you need to know what painkiller has already been given. And while taking the history, you can ask the patient, have you given any painkiller? I mean, saying I'm pain, you can offer the painkiller. This is your IPS. For, for example, if I, when you are going to do uh, this uh, uh, stupa KRS, on the S, you are going to ask the fair scale. The patient says, I have nine out of 10 pain. So you need to ask about that. 
uh, how much pain it is. Okay. Uh, then you, you, I can. Uh, have you already given any any painkiller? If it is not, you can offer the painkiller and you can start taking your history as well. Okay. So the clue is that your IPS here. And second, look at the chart and notes. Okay. Circulation part. There will be nothing wrong in the circulation part. However, again, important point is that have you done the abdominal examination or not? In this approach, abdominal examination is important because an examination of your wound is important because you need to see that. And examination of the genital part is important. Okay? In this scenario, because he has already done, uh, the scenario is uh, with some operation. Oh, it is the urosepsis. Uh, okay, scenario is not written over here, but the patient is, uh, uh, it's some, some abdominal uh, operation has undergone, uh, I'm not sure which operation it is, uh, uh, but you need to examine the wound. It is quite important if you forget about that, uh, uh, this is a disaster. Similarly, after this, you need to, if the morphine has already been given IV, 10 mg, and when it is given, it is important. If it is still, in the notes it's written five minutes before morphine is given, and you say, okay, I'm going to repeat the morphine, then you are doing the, then you need to explain the patient, okay, it needs some time to get the fact, okay? And if the morphine, the clue is that they have written something in the notes and you need to pick that, okay? You need to see the drug chart. If you are not watching the drug chart and it's time, then, then it is the problem. And they have already given the morphine, you cannot give the morphine. They have, they have given the paracetamol, yes, you can give the morphine 10, uh, up to 10 mg, okay? Other thing is the well, same, now you will counsel the patient in here. This is quite easy station. If you do this station, this is quite easy station. Um, last station in our type is acute limb ischemia. Acute limb ischemia patient, uh, uh, it is, uh, in this patient is with leg pain. The patient is with leg pain, okay? Don't confuse it with a the claudication. There is another scenario we're not going to talk about that. You are going to just read this. This is the last scenario we're going to do is the acute limb ischemia, patient is stable, leg pain, one-sided leg pain. It's acute limb ischemia. You will start looking at the monitor, start, you will find nothing on the monitor. Everything will be all right. The problem is that while uh, breathing will be all right, you will, you will go after watching at the monitor, you will go directly to the circulation. On the circulation, everything will be all right. However, there will be irregular rhythm on the monitor. So what you are going to do is uh, in this part, after that, you need to, because in the history here, important is the history. I am again repeating in the stable patient, history is quite important. You need to take a proper history in this. After opening, after watching at the monitor, you will, you can take your history in the circulation part and you can take proper history. What has happened? Everything you will ask about uh, in the like a uh, DVT scenario, we ask the, even travel history, even the cancer thing, whatever we will take proper history, starting from the pain, we will uh, do uh, the stupa KRS score. And after that, we will be asking total history uh, in this scenario. And after that, in the, in the examination part, we need to see for the 6P. And you need to examine the limb and you need to compare the one limb with the other. You will painful, pale, paresthesia, paralysis, piercing cold and pulseless. And you need to do, uh, you need to palpate the pulses of both sides. You need uh, to like check the temperature. Uh, you need to take the observation. This is important in this scenario, okay? Then definitely you need in the history part, you need to uh, take the smoking history. You need to, and all the things are required. Even the uh, social history is important in this scenario because his travel history is important in this, his cancer history is important in this scenario. Okay. Then uh, after doing the examination, yeah, you will be doing the neurological examination. You will be see for the Sensory part, you will be safe for the motor part, vascular part. In this scenario, I'm repeating again and again, our examination is important. 
in this scenario we will find nothing on the monitor everything is our examination okay this is abcd scenario because this is emergency because we have to apprehend the patient at once whenever when you find this okay then you will explain to the patient okay what you will do is okay second thing you will be doing the vascular examination because uh, atrial fibrillation is going on okay so you will you need to anti coagulate the patient as well so in this scenario we go approach wise for example we find nothing on a we find nothing on b we find nothing on c whatever we find is on the examination in this acute limb ischemia why it is in in here because it is an emergency it is a dire emergency you will admit the patient you will give an analgesia you will uh, like uh, do the clotting profile all send for sample you will pass the iv cannulation and then what will you will be doing you will involve the seniors and you will be arranging for doppler scan and you will heparinize the patient at once subcut heparinize the patient and you will give the maintenance fluid look at this this is the maintenance fluid it is not other fluid we are giving in the iv cannula here we are giving maintenance fluid this is 1 liter over 8 hour 8 hours it is the first time this this is this is nowhere else here it is the maintenance fluid okay the and urgent referral to the um, to the vascular surgeon these are the most important point you are going to do but you are going to do admit give analgesia uh, send for ecg and give maintenance fluid uh, uh, heparinize the patient maintenance fluid and you are going to refer patient to the vascular surgeon and referral means here for us it you are going to send call for vascular surgeon maybe it is in your hospital they come and because embolectomy can be given there because this is a cute limb scheme so this is all about a b c d approach uh, other are uh, scenarios there are three other three four other scenarios you just give read to it no need to do that these are the scenario what you people need to do that you need to you need to read that by and by each and every and do that each and every approach wise and make your groups and do with yourself now uh, i know it it was a little bit uh, i i had calculated it at uh, uh, for the lesser time but it is quite long uh, after 5 minute we are going to open question and answer session if any question uh, you uh, you are welcome to ask any question